But now on TV Go Home, the fascinating televisual experiment, Daily Mail Island. For the past year, 12 volunteers have given up their careers, possessions and lives to participate in a social experiment on the remote Welsh island of Clandifno. With a right-wing tabloid as their only source of information, these people make up the inhabitants of Daily Mail Island. Before arriving on the island, maths teacher Duncan Holdall was concerned the others wouldn't fully accept him because of his sexual orientation. My hope, my real hope, is that it won't be an issue, that we'll build a society where what a consenting adult does in the privacy of their own bedroom is as irrelevant as what colour their hair is or how many legs they've got. But five months into the project, a problem develops. At first everything was fine, but now there are, there are things that are starting to bother me, people's attitudes. It's making me sick. I'm, I'm going to have to say something. Any other business? Yes, um, I'd, I'd like to say a few words. And I'm sorry if this upsets anyone, but um, I have to get this off my chest. Frankly, I find a lot of your attitudes disgusting. I'd like to think after all the time we've shared together, we could all be friends, but there are some people here whose opinions I find objectionable. When I came to the island, I told you all that I was gay, and not one of you has looked down on me. Not one. There hasn't even been any poster jokes. And the longer I've had to think about this, the more it has upset me. I mean, I'm a fairy. That's not normal, is it? It's not what nature intended, so it's wrong. It's obvious, isn't it? Why can't you see that? Duncan, I think you've got the wrong impression. I mean, I think I can speak for the whole group when I say that secretly we all despise homosexuality. Yeah, Duncan, if it's any consolation, I've come to see you more and more as an affront to God's earth. Thanks. Thanks, Puffin. Thanks, Jean. That means a lot. It really does. I appreciate it, but... They're just words. How do I know you really mean it? How do I know you just won't learn to accept me? Look, Duncan, you're a valuable member of this community, but it doesn't mean we'll ever really stomach your repulsive tendencies, and I hope this convinces you. Oh! Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Bassington. Thanks. I just hope you all can, can find it in your heart to try and to drum, drum this wicked illness from my twisted mind. It was just a lovely moment for the community. I think we all needed to reinforce the bonds within the group, and Duncan's gayness did just that. And he seems a lot happier in himself, especially now he started his treatment. We've had a talk, and it's been decided that what I need is therapy, so I have to stay in here with this hammer. And from now on, whenever I have a homosexual thought, I must tap it out of my head. Sort of, uh, sort of a bit like this. <laughs> only, only harder. Now we pay another visit to Daily Mail Island. For the past year, 12 volunteers have given up their careers, possessions and lives to participate in a social experiment on the remote Welsh island of Clandifno. With a right-wing tabloid as their only source of information, these people make up the inhabitants of Daily Mail Island. Before arriving on the island, most of the volunteers avoided the Daily Mail. It's just drivel. Oh, it's far too right-wing. I don't really read the papers. Oh, it's a disgusting, sad little thing. Well, in a truly free society, it would, it would be banned. With one exception. Well, it's the only paper that knows what's going on and isn't afraid to say so. At their first meeting, Des proposes using bottle tops as a form of currency. Why don't we have a vote and just see how we get on? Hmm. Bottle tops, votes four. Thank you. Largely uninterested, the islanders pass a vote of yes. Carrier. You have to have a monetary system. 
uh, without one, you're effectively saying, hey, uh, I'm no more sophisticated than an animal. I basically function on the same level as a hen. We humoured him, basically. <laughs> I mean, what use do we have for a currency here? There are two reasons I chose bottle tops for the currency. Uh, firstly, they're very, uh, very durable. And secondly, I brought these with me. Despite a slow start, after three weeks of mail reading, interest in bottle tops starts to flourish. So thank you very much. Super. But the Next success week. of the oh, currency brings its own problems. Jean? What are you doing? I'm just removing the bottle tops. <clears throat> For security purposes, I thought somebody might steal them. Well, where are you going to put them? In a safe place so that nobody would steal well, them. Well, from where I'm standing, it looks like you're trying to steal them yourself. <gasps> Half each? What are we going to do with these? But in week five, the thriving currency runs into trouble. The producers have asked us to stop using the bottle tops because they're dangerous. Why? Well, because they think small children can cut their hands on them yeah. and they've suggested we use pebbles. Anyone have a problem with that? Yeah. Oh, yes, I have a problem. Bottle tops are inexorably entwined with our lives. They don't just want to replace our currency, they want to undermine our way of life. The, the very spirit that has made this the greatest island in the world for over 21 days. Replace these with pebbles, and you replace our whole identity. What, what, what do these bureaucrats know about the way we live our lives, eh? eh? They're based over five miles away, for God's sake. Is this what we bore the drizzly rain of last Monday for? T to, to roll over and let all of outsiders push us around? No. We must save the bottle top. Yeah. Save the bottle top. Save the bottle top. Save the bottle top. Save the bottle top! 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 Now on TV Go Home, Daily Mail Island. For the past year, 12 volunteers have given up their careers, possessions and lives to participate in a social experiment on the remote Welsh island of Clandifno. With a right-wing tabloid as their only source of information, these people make up the inhabitants of Daily Mail Island. Before arriving on the island, Des Pliers was the only participant to actually read the Daily Mail. Des felt this familiarity would serve him well. Well, I think some people are going to find it very difficult to cope. Um, they may have just skimmed a copy that they picked up on a train, but um, I've been reading the mail every day, cover to cover, for 15 years. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love Nigel Dempster, uh, the big colour pics of the royals, the endless rhetorical questions. Um, t take today's, for example. Um, as the Yorkshire Rastafarian Society are granted lottery money to erect a 40-foot-high statue of Marcus Garvey, can we be certain our children won't be potheads by noon? See, I can take that kind of thing on the chin, but I'm not sure how some of the others will cope. But after 120 days on the island, Des is showing signs of strain. At first, he, he seemed so at home here. He was everything you'd expect a Daily Mail reader to be. He was patriotic, reactionary, um, patronising and, and opinionated, but, but then he got really into Fred Bassett. Oh, very good. I think he never really had time for the cartoons page at home, but for the past three months, it's all he's read. Now it's Fred Bassett this, Fred Bassett that. And I think his behaviour, to be honest, is really starting to freak people out. Two weeks ago, the islanders made nettle punch and held a disco. At the dance, Des's fascination with Fred was clearly on display. Hello, Des. Oh, a party. Des? Lots of music, lots of booze. Is he all right? And in the morning, lots of headaches. 
his obsession with the Rye cartoon dog even began to permeate council meetings. They don't need rehousing, they need hanging. Somebody lost at golf this morning. In desperation, the islanders arrange a court hearing to decide Des's fate. After a six hour trial, he's sentenced to a stoning on the beach. And there you will be brutally beaten until the Basset Hound is banished from your body. Do you have anything to say, Des? The last time I saw that look, someone had broken the greenhouse window. As Richard Littlejohn is sealed inside an iron ball and fired into the ocean. Now we pay another visit to Daily Mail Island. For the past year, 12 volunteers have given up their careers, possessions and lives to participate in a social experiment on the remote Welsh island of Clandifno. With a right-wing tabloid as their only source of information, these people make up the inhabitants of Daily Mail Island. Now three months into the project, many of the volunteers have found themselves reassessing their political views. None more so than Bassington Davis and his life partner, Jean Galoshes, who, in their lives before the island, enjoyed a very liberal existence. We have an open relationship. Some people are horrified by this, but it actually keeps us closer together. Now, after 60 days of reading the Daily Mail, the pair have changed beyond all recognition. The way Ali dresses is disgraceful. To be honest, dressing like that, she's practically asking for it. That woman dresses like a whore, a disgusting foreign whore. I thought I could see the top of her left nipple earlier. I had to stand on a chair to be sure. And there it was, absolutely shameful behavior. But worse is to come. On Thursday, Jean catches her 16-year-old daughter, Sarah, Love masturbating. I heard some noises from inside her room. And I walked in, and there she was, just debasing everything with her fingers. Following a crisis meeting, the islanders decide to put Sarah on trial. Bassington appoints himself judge. Sarah Galoshes, you are accused of manipulating your own genitalia in a bid to achieve orgasm. I have to say, this is one of the foulest crimes I have ever encountered during my two-hour tenure as Justice of the Peace. Yet, despite the appalling nature of your misdoings, you will be granted a fair trial. Have you anything to say, you filthy little cow? That concludes the case for the defence. Bassington's prosecution requires Sarah to perform a full recreation of the incident in front of the courtroom. Again. Eventually, Sarah is required to submit the evidence six times before the jury is satisfied. I think we all, I think everybody wanted to be absolutely certain what had taken place in order that we could decide precisely how to punish the girl. It uh, wasn't an easy spectacle to sit through by any means. Indeed, I know Des had to make his excuses and run to the lavatory at least three times. Foreman of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have. How do you find the dirty little wretch? Guilty. Sarah Galoshes, you have committed a wicked act, a wicked act that can only be rectified by the imposition of another wickeder act. And it is with this in mind that I impose a sentence befitting your monstrous crime. Uh, take her down. Bye, love. Yes, bye, love. You have to clamp down on this kind of thing because it spreads, you see. I'll be keeping a close eye on Ali, just in case she starts trying any of this masturbating business. I've taken the precaution of drilling a spy hole in her bedroom wall. So rest assured, if she does start caressing her own sex in the middle of the night, the eyes of justice will be watching. 
That was Daily Mail Island. This is TV Go Home. Now, the fascinating televisual experiment, Daily Mail Island. For the past year, 12 volunteers have given up their careers, possessions and lives to participate in a social experiment on the remote Welsh island of Clandifno. With a right-wing tabloid as their only source of information, these people make up the inhabitants of Daily Mail Island. Being the eldest member of the group and a local councillor, Bassington Davis came to the island with firm ideas on how the community should be run. In an intelligent, informed society, self-governing is the key. If no one man has power over another, then he can't be corrupted by his position. It really is that simple. However, 11 months into the project, Bassington appears to have had a change of heart. He announces to the group he thinks the island lacks a monarchy. All I'm saying is that we need an identity if we are to be taken seriously as a nation. We need to be seen as a formidable force. We can't confront our enemies without a king. But, Bassington, who are our enemies? These meddlers. Think about it. They've been following us for months, filming everything we do, giving us tasks. Isn't it time we stood on our own two feet? Isn't it time we started to run things the way we wanted to run them? Isn't it time I was king? I do think Bassington's got a point. Thank you, Ellie. You can be my queen. Yes, that's perfect. You can be my queen. I've already appointed Des my Minister of Information. Haven't I, Des? Yes, Your Majesty. Yes, right, good, good, that's agreed. I am king. So the first thing I will do as king is decree that all foreign media coverage of our island be restricted. Des, get these bloody foreigners out of here. And the second thing I will do is spend more time with my queen. We need siren air. Come on, Ali. With Bassington proclaiming himself ruler of the island, all communication with the production team is cut off. After three days, however, Jean gets word to the crew that she is unhappy and arranges to meet series producer Jackson Strong in the woods. I think Bassington is going too far. He has decided that the other men aren't proper whiteies, as he puts it, and so he has neutered them all with a sharpened spoon. There are a lot of unhappy men in the community wandering around in blood-soaked nappies. It's not good for morale. Can you help us? Bassington agreed to meet us. Listen, there is no room for your kind of people on our island. I have decreed that TV companies will now only be known as the Blacks. We don't want the Blacks on our island. You have to leave our island now. The crew decide to stay put. You leave us with no option. We will not tolerate your presence on our land. Attack! It was then the producers decided to cut the project short. That's all for TV Go Home this evening. Good night. The TV Go Home electronic programme guide is now exclusively available at e4.com forward slash TV Go Home. Get rough and ready for the Catwoman of Verona. It's all raw and rude in Eurotrash next. <laughs>